Hello, I'm Dr. Carly Pond, clinical lead at Biomsite. This video is a part of a series where I walk through how a practitioner would look at sample results. Before we dive in, I need to remind you that while I am a doctor, I am not your doctor. The information in this video is for educational purposes only and is not intended as medical advice. Please speak to your healthcare provider before making any changes to your healthcare. In this video, we will explore an overview of the microbiome and how to modulate the microbiome. So our gut contains over 100 trillion microbes that we are learning more and more about every day. So we still have a lot to learn about our microbiome, but each new research study tells us that our microbiome is really critical to our health. So the microbiome, as we know so far, modulates the immune system, so protecting against allergies and helping us defend against viruses and other pathogens. It helps regulate the gut motility, so preventing constipation, helps us absorb vitamins from our food, even helps us metabolize, break down our food, improves our nutritional status by making vitamins, prevents bad microbes from colonizing our gut, produces a short-chain fatty acid, which feed our colon cells and help prevent colon cancer. Our microbiome also impacts our metabolism which helps balance blood sugar, improves insulin sensitivity, and impacts our weight. It also impacts our mood and impacts inflammation throughout our body. And there is a lot more that our microbiome does that we continue to learn about every day. So research is connecting our microbiome to the development of all sorts of diseases, from Alzheimer's to endometriosis, from anxiety to diabetes from obesity to inflammatory bowel disease. So at this point, if you have been diagnosed with a disease or simply have some undiagnosed symptoms, even if they're not digestive symptoms, it is a safe bet that your microbiome may be involved in those somehow. So as I've already stated, we still have a lot to learn about the microbiome, to date, we don't actually have a concrete definition of a perfect microbiome. And honestly, since every human being is so diverse, there is probably no such thing as a perfect microbiome. But the existing research has taught us some aspects of the microbiome that are beneficial to our health and other aspects that may be detrimental. So that is what we are going to be focusing on. So as a practitioner, when I look at someone's stool test results, here are the main things that I'm looking at. First is diversity of the microbiome. The second is the amount of bacteria that make a toxin called LPS. The third is the amount of bacteria that make butyrate, which is an anti-inflammatory short-chain fatty acid. And the last is the populations of keystone species or probiotics, which are well-known beneficial bacteria. So in the video series, we will be diving into detail about these different aspects of the microbiome, focusing on how you can modulate those different aspects of the microbiome. But first, let's talk about general approaches and tools to modulate your microbiome, because you're going to get a lot of data with these results. So let's talk about how to break it down and how to understand what you should take action on with these results. So first, you want to assess where your problem areas are. Do you have elevated inflammatory bacteria, aka the pathobionts? Do you have low probiotics? What about your anti-inflammatory species, aka the butyrate producers? So once you have a general assessment of your microbiome, there are several different approaches. The first approach is to target the overgrowth first. So you'd focus on modulating the pathobionts or any elevated commensals. After those are lower, you would then focus on supporting your beneficial bacteria, the butyrate producers, and probiotics. So this approach utilizes antimicrobial therapies, such as specific herbs. It may also utilize specific strains of probiotics or sometimes prebiotics. The second approach is to focus on the beneficial bacteria only, 
even if you have overgrowth. So the idea here is that when the beneficial bacteria are healthy and supported, they create an environment that is inhospitable to the pathobionts or opportunistic bacteria. So by supporting the good stuff, the good stuff will take care of the bad stuff for you, to put it simply. So the second approach, the tools you're going to focus on will be nutrition, prebiotics, and some targeted probiotics. So let's talk about some pros and cons about these two different approaches. So directly targeting overgrowths can yield quicker results, but there can be more side effects or you can modulate the microbiome in negative ways. So this approach is best done under the supervision of a clinician. Focusing on the beneficial species generally has less side effects. You're using safer tools, but it may take longer to get results. So let's talk about these tools that we're going to be using to modulate the microbiome. So the primary tools are going to be food, herbs, prebiotics, and probiotics. So everything that enters your digestive tract will have an impact on your microbiome. So when it comes to nutrition, you need to be considering fiber content, polyphenol content, and you also need to be thinking about chemical additives like pesticides and antibiotics that may be in your food. And sometimes you do need to think about the fat and protein content or the sources of the fat and protein in your diet. So in general, fiber and antioxidants like the polyphenols are going to support a healthy microbiome. So incorporating plant-based foods in the color of the rainbow is what we want there. Chemical additives, pesticides, too much fat or protein from animal sources, that may all negatively impact the microbiome. So adjusting your nutrition to meet the needs of your microbiome should always be the first step in modulating your microbiome. All of the probiotics and prebiotics in the world may not be able to balance your microbiome if you are not eating according to your microbiome. So herbs are best used as antimicrobials to reduce the population of elevated bacteria. Herbs are potent, so they may interact with your medications or other supplements, and they could have some negative impacts on organ function if not used at the right dose or used too long. The other aspect to herbs is that if you use them for too long, they can also negatively impact beneficial species in your gut. So again, herbs should be used with caution for short term under the supervision of a qualified healthcare professional for best results. So prebiotics are gut bacteria food, essentially. They are primarily used to boost the levels of bacteria. So they are best used to support your probiotic bacteria and your butyrate producers. Now, there are many types of different prebiotics, and not all of them are equal. So you really need to customize your prebiotics to your specific microbiome. And I would recommend using one at a time in the beginning and not a blend so you can see exactly how your microbiome is responding to these individual prebiotics. So certain foods are natural sources of the prebiotics, but supplements allow you to get a much higher dose of prebiotics that can be typically found in food. Probiotic supplements can also be helpful to modulate the microbiome, but there are important considerations and limitations to probiotics. First, a probiotic supplement only contains species that tolerate oxygen. Much of the microbiome does not tolerate oxygen. So standard probiotics only contain lactobacillus and bifidobacterium species, which make up less than 5% of the microbiome. The other aspect is that probiotics do not colonize the gut. Research shows that they may hang out for two weeks in your gut, but they do not colonize. While they're there, the probiotics can have beneficial impacts on the host, like modulating the immune system, and they can also interact with the resident microbiome with some beneficial outcomes. But that is assuming the probiotics survive the trip from where they were made to your large intestine. Many probiotics actually contain dead bacteria by the time you swallow the pill, 
or even if they are alive in the pill, your stomach acid and bile may kill them in transit to the large intestine. So while probiotics can be beneficial, we need to think about quality of the supplement and also we need to pick the exact strain to mix well with your resident microbiome. Probiotics can be used to address overgrowths, but they are generally not as effective as herbs. Probiotics can also boost beneficial bacteria, but again, they are generally not as effective as nutrition or prebiotics. So to modulate your microbiome, first start with adjusting your diet. If you have overgrowths, consider using herbs or focus on your beneficial bacteria using prebiotics. And then use targeted probiotics in addition to diet, herbs, and prebiotics if desired. 